Push us off, Captain. In. Here we go. Ah! Woo! Get up here in the middle. Get in the middle. You're going to flip us. I got my phone in my pocket. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode where today we are going to talk about the most important reason why you should add structure to your pond. We're going to start off by cutting some cedars today and uh, this episode is Ron Weatherspoon approved. <laughs> plywood. This would be perfect to set my concrete poly habitat on. Okay, so the plan for today is we're gonna build structure or habitat for our fish in our brand new pond. So as of right now, we don't have any structure in there. It's just like a big old pool where the fish are just swimming around eating each other. The key reason why you want structure is so they don't eat each other. So the bait fish will have a place to hide, get up underneath, and they'll actually have a fighting chance. And the big fish won't just eat them right away where that would lead to you having to stock it with bait fish all the time. So the more structure they have, the better it is for the bait fish. But you also don't want too much structure um, because then you'd be getting hung up on it all the time while you're fishing. So right here, we've got three cinder blocks and I'm gonna make poly habitat. Uh, so basically it's an artificial habitat that we're gonna make out of poly tubing, which is also known as PEX uh, type of plumbing. It's like a three quarter inch tube. And the stuff that I have was a manufactured defect. We can't use it anymore. Um, so I thought I'd repurpose it and we'll make some artificial habitat out of it. So what you do is you stick ends of the poly tubing out and it'll be coming out every which way and it'll kind of mimic a tree. After you put that in there, you'll fill this with concrete and it'll all be one piece. And then we'll just drop those off down in the water and then we'll have three artificial trees, if you will. So I've also got some cedar trees over there that I cut yesterday and we'll drop those off in there as well. So we just got to kind of a mix up a habitat. I'm gonna head back here and grab some of this poly, grab some concrete. Let's get these put together. All right guys, so yesterday I ran out of daylight and uh, finally got the habitat fixed up, the poly habitat, but the concrete's still drying so we can't even put them in today. So I've got this little uh, little pond jumper boat here borrowed from a friend, old Roscoe P. Coltrane. And I've got this pipe right here. 
and I'm gonna use this to check the depth in our new pond so I see if it's deep enough for this habitat to even go in. Hopefully it is. And I've got over here some cedars that we cut also at Ross's. And uh, Tyler here is gonna help me out. So if I fall in the water, it's not my can, fault. He can jump in and save me. <laughs> Let's get this thing in the water. Ross, if this thing sinks, I'm coming for you. Oh, 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 let's start going over my boots. Woo! That's cold. That was dumb. What's the point in a boat if you're gonna get wet anyway? <laughs> All right. Hey, that's nice. You gonna sell this boat, Raw? Oh. Here we go. Oh, it's pretty cool. All right, let's see what depth we are right here. First time sailing the Payne Lake. Okay, so far we're about 20 foot out from the bank. Two and a half feet. <laughs> That's not very good. We're about two and a half feet. Let's go out a little bit further. supposed to be the deepest part of the pond. We got some depth. That is good. Good. So from where my left hand is, is how far we went down. Seven feet. Oh, there went my pipe. Just dropped my pipe. I need a new pipe. And this tape measure about cut my finger off. Oh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to check the depth now. I guess I can just use my tape measure. This is the deepest corner. Ooh, that's only five foot. It's not good. Let's check the other side. Five foot right there. Awfully shallow pond. Not what I wanted. Never thought I'd be paddling a boat on this part of my property. <laughs> I got a pond now. Check it. Check it real good. Oh yeah, man. oh yeah. We got seven feet. It's pretty good. The pond can actually fill up a little bit more. The pond's not all the way full. So I think once we get some more water, we're supposed to get a storm like tomorrow night or something. Should be pretty good. We're like seven feet, four inches. Let's go over there. Roll me a rod and rail. <laughs> That's only five feet, dude. five and a half feet. Eh. Not terribly deep. But I think bass will live in it. Okay, so now that we've determined how deep the pond is, we've got some brush over here, which is cedar trees that we got from old Roscoe's place. And uh, Tyler's gonna help me throw them in. Uh, Tyler just started a clothing company called Wide Open Outdoors. And I need you guys to help me encourage him to create a YouTube channel. So uh, if you would subscribe to his channel, comment down below and let him know that you would subscribe to Wide Open Outdoors. He does fishing and hunting and all kinds of cool stuff. Stuff like this, really. So anyway, 
Now we got to get these put out in the deep part of the pond. We've got, if you step over here, some rope and cinder blocks. And we're going to tie those cinder blocks to the base of those cedars and sink them out there in the pond. So let's get to it. Okay, so I think it'd be easiest if we put the cinder blocks on. We'll do one. We'll do one cedar tree at a time. Then I'll put the cedar on there and tie it on the boat. This is gonna sink. <laughs> Give me some rope. I like to keep all my rope rolled up really nice so I can just pull it out. Keep it in a nice roll, you know, so you can access it fairly easily. Let's go around the base. One knot, two knot, three knot. That's not going anywhere. Somebody really needs to sharpen this knife. Let's tie it around the cinder. Oh, cinder block, if you will. Really don't think that's going anywhere. It's had like six or nine knots. Okay, you ready to get on this skiff with me? Oh yeah. Turn on my GoPro. All right. How are we gonna do this? I got sap on me. I get sap on me. <sighs> <laughs> I did not bring my mud boots today. That's okay. <laughs> We're gonna sink. If we do sink though, blaming this on the neighbor across the road, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna try to push off and not fall in. <sighs> push us off, Captain. In. Here we go. Ah! Woo! Get up Woo! here in the middle. Get in the middle, you're gonna flip us. You're gonna flip us. I got my phone in my pocket. I do too. This is scary. I'm hoping we drop that center block that uh, <laughs> we don't teeter totter, if you will. Oh. Wonder if this is how the pilgrims did it. Sorry, I got a little, got a little dribble on you. It's a nice, uh, beautiful day out on Payne Lake. Sinking some brush. <laughs> Hold on to your BVDs. <laughs> <laughs> We're not moving very fast. You got your big ass on here now. <laughs> I'm going very fast. This is this is probably the deepest spot right here. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Wait a minute. I gotta get spun around. I hope we don't kill any fish. Like crush them with the cinder block. I'm ready when you are. I hope you don't flip us, man. I got my phone in my pocket. I got everything. My wallet, my phone. Oh, my keys. man. Should I just jump it off? Yeah, yeah. Grab it. Grab it. Keep hold, keep your grounds. I hope you don't bust through the bottom of this boat, dude. We are sinking. Hold on. All right. Hold still. I got my now. phone so I can throw it to the bank. Ready? Go. There it goes. Success! Look, and you can still see where it's at. That's hey, cool. That turned out pretty good, <laughs> honestly. There's For a little boat. That's awesome. So you know exactly where it's at. Perfect habitat. Nice. Round two. Now we need to get the other one. Let's go. Okay, on to the next one. Wide open outdoors. Head on over to Facebook forward slash wide open outdoors is that how it's listed facebook.com i'm not sure for the link but you can find us on facebook in the good old search engine wide open outdoors and on instagram as well and we also have a TikTok, and we will probably be on the youtube very soon so stay tuned 
You want me to get out first? Like pull me to the side and then, cause I got yeah, mud boots. I'm gonna try to cover you up. Hang on, Tyler. Okay. Okay. Steve. Yeah, this one's shorter. This one's shorter. It's going to be a lot better. Y'all ready for this? Watch, this will be the one that sinks us. I'm leaving my phone in the bank this time. <laughs> Hop on in here, old son. Oh, I forgot my phone. Dang it. Oh well. Hopefully we're not flipping. Hopefully nothing happens. Don't you just love the smell of cedar. <laughs> I think I'm allergic to it. Uh-oh. <laughs> the wind's blowing us. You like a big sail. <laughs> All right, ready when you are, Captain. All right, here we go. Oh, this one's don't don't flip us. Don't flip us. There it goes. Perfect. Nice. You can just barely see the top. It's barely touching. Oh, that's prime, dude. Nice. We can cast right there between them. Snag a big old mama bass. It's gonna be legit. That's pretty cool, man. Well, that's definitely not seven feet right there. <laughs> That'll give the bait fish a place to hide, though. What? Be nice, nice habitat. Oh, Pull up the cinder block. We need to redo the shot. Ow! Son of a biscuit! Darn! <laughs> ah! You gonna be able to get out of the boat? Ah! Success! Yay! That's cool, dude. I think it's gonna be great. Oh yeah. I'm excited. Start of a great fishery. Yes, sir. The fish are probably already in it. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So unfortunately, the concrete is not set up on the artificial habitat that I made with the poly. So we can't put those in today, but we got the two cedar trees put in. I hope you guys enjoyed that. But um, I think these will greatly benefit the habitat of the pond. Um, Tyler's an avid fisherman. He knows all about this stuff and how important this habitat is to add to the pond. Tyler, how important is habitat in a pond? Habitat for a fishery is pretty common. I mean, you, you have fish that are gonna get inside these that they're gonna feel secluded. They'll get, get in here, get on the tops of them, uh, especially your crappie. Crappie really love brush. Anytime you're near a uh, brush, whether it's artificial uh, or real, fish will get around here and they'll feel secluded and away from predators, uh, maybe bigger fish, uh, like your bait fish will get around them as well. Uh, bass, crappie, get around here, hide, feel secluded and uh, out away from everything, just uh, waiting on bait fish to come by and they'll swim out and uh, get a free meal, if you will. Really great really great habitat for you know ponds and and the lakes you know the wildlife they they do this stuff for our uh, lakes here in oklahoma and uh it really helps out all right guys so that wraps it up for today i really appreciate you watching we will be doing a part two introducing the poly habitat to the pond um, but i hope you enjoyed today's video if you haven't already please subscribe i'm uploading a video like every three days i'm fired up um, appreciate you guys we'll catch you on the next one